Okay, so today is Tuesday. We, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the last two games of NFL Week 3 happened yesterday. So now we can look back in Week 3 and see what the fuck happened and how I did on my picks. Now, as I say, basically at the start of all of these, it is important to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I was not able to watch the majority of these games. I work on Sundays. So I generally are only able to watch the primetime games. However, I do keep like looking at my phone while I'm working, like I'm still able to get work done. But like I will kind of check what are the scores right now? What's kind of the vibe and the pace of a game? Is it is like one team is kind of blitzing the other, but the other one makes a little bit of a comeback. So when you look at the final score, it doesn't indicate how one-sided it actually is. Is it kind of a back and forth game throughout, et cetera, et cetera. Or like the fucking Saints, does a team just fucking blow the lead in the fourth quarter? Is mm. Well, I'll, I'll, I wasn't able to watch most of that. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But the first game of week three was the New York Giants traveling to Santa Clara, I believe. Again, I almost said San Francisco. They're like, no, then they moved from San Francisco to Santa Clara. But they played the San Francisco 49ers, and the Niners won. Did I not write the score? No, there it is. 30 to 12. In a game where, so to me, generally speaking, I see if a game is a three-score lead, that to me is when it starts becoming a blowout. However... I also generally think that you're probably going to get about three possessions a quarter, more or less. Excuse me. So even if a game is 17 to nothing, hypothetically speaking, at the start of a fourth quarter, the team that's up 17 points, you're winning. You're winning by a large margin, but it's definitely not over yet. There is still a lot of time. Don't worry why I'm specifically saying 17 to 0. We will get to that. But looking at this, like 30 to 12, an 18-point game, that's a three-score game. I would look at that as a blowout. It didn't feel like one for most of the game, though. I will say, the I never did I ever really feel like, man, the Giants are gonna make this a game, the Giants are gonna win this. Not really. But it was tight almost the entire way. It was like 3-3 three, three, partway through the first quarter. I think at halftime it was 17-6. to six. Certainly not a blowout. Giants get the ball first, score a touchdown. I think they, I don't know if they went for two or if they just missed the kick. I think they went for two and didn't convert it. So it was 17-12 pretty early in the third quarter. Giants didn't score the rest of the way. 49ers, I think, scored a touchdown and a field goal. No, I think it was a touchdown and two field goals. They scored 13 in the second half, leading to the final score. I had McCaffrey, Debo, and Kittle all on my fantasy team. And so, I, as much as I want to say, I was like, dude, I ate well. Like, they did really fucking good for me. Like, they were putting up numbers. Brock Purdy was, like, he was orchestrating the offense very well. The Niners definitely had a lot of extra chances. There were a lot of penalties on the Giants. I remember watching, I don't remember off the top of my head which specifically, but I remember quite a few that I was like, yeah, that that looks like a fair call. And then some others where I'm like, I, sure, I guess, I guess we're doing this. Fuck the Giants, I suppose. And it was one of those where I'm like, is the 49ers offense just that good? And like how, like they really are, they have a, fucking great amount of skill position players but I'm also like they got a lot of extra chances how much do I it's it's let me put it like this I'm not saying I'm doubting this offense because I fucking don't they're averaging 30 a game and not like a, yeah like in one game they scored like 30 something and the other was like 20 like 28 and when you average it out it's 30 no they have literally scored 30 points in all three games like you don't do that three games in a row if you're a shitty offense. But I do kind of wonder it's how much of that was also based on like the Giants ineptitude and all the penalties on defense giving the 49ers extra possession, not necessarily extra possession, but like extra, extra attempts, I guess. Also like week one, they played Pittsburgh, who has been a really bad offense. It is like, yeah, if 
the other team's offense is constantly punting the ball or turning it over, you're going to get a lot more opportunities to score. Who did they play last week? Uh, last week they played the Rams, so that's actually a good offense. But <clears throat> I do think the 49ers are like a really good team. The Giants, they're without Saquon. They're without like two-fifths of their offensive line. They did better than I was expecting. They hung in there a lot. That's two out of three weeks that the Giants have shown a lot of fight. And then, of course, week one still fucking happened. So I don't really know. It's like, do I think this team is really bad? Do I think they're, you know, like a, a really tough team that's maybe pretty good? But, I mean, you go to San Francisco on a short week, missing like three offensive starters, and you got to deal with their D-line, you're probably not going to do very well. Like, I, I'm not really sure what I think of the Giants. But the 49ers, I think they're the... No, they're not the only undefeated team in the NFC. We'll get to that. They're one of three undefeated teams total, two in the NFC. They look like they're basically on cruise control to the NFC Championship, where I guess they'll play Philly, maybe Dallas... But they, I mean, they look like they're at least getting to the NFC Championship at this point. But hopefully, everyone stays healthy. But, um, it's basically all for that game. Although, there was a point I was starting to make, and then I just kept talking about the game. Because I was going to be like, man, those guys did work for me. I had a really good fantasy, uh, fantasy game. But the fantasy league that I'm in, that I'm, like, really paying attention to is, it's just with four guys. It's me and, like, a couple of my friends. So because we have a smaller league, it's a lot easier to get some really good players on your team. Like, I had McCaffrey and Nick Chubb as my running backs, which, because of what happened with Nick Chubb, like, I'm having my own issues with my running back in my fantasy league, but that, that's something else entirely. But the guy I'm playing against this week had Justin Jefferson, who went off, Tyreek Hill, who went off, and then in his flex had Devontae Adams, who went off. <laughs> like, man, I had some, I had some pretty good players, some pretty good numbers. Oh, well, I got steamrolled. <laughs> but at least where picking games was concerned so far, 1-0. and oh. Second game, Falcons and the Lions. I'm 2-0 because oh, I did pick the Lions to win, which they did 20-6. to six. I went back and forth when I was picking this game. There was a point where I was like, ah, I think the Lions win. And then another time where I was like, ah, I think the Falcons win, and ultimately I decided, you know what? Since I want the Lions to win, and I'm not super sure either way, I'm just going to roll with them. They played really fucking well. Um, it, it was like almost every time I looked down, like the Lions were consistently winning, and it was usually by like double digits. It seemed like every time it would be like third and long for the Falcons. They're like, all right, how's the, how is it looking for them? Oh, it's third and twelve. Okay, how's it looking now? Now it's third and 50. I'm like, holy shit. What the fuck is happening? Is Aiden Hutchinson just feasting? I think when I looked at it, the Falcons gave up seven sacks in that game. So, yeah, the Lions defense were fucking feasting. Like, they were eating some kneecaps all day. Um, Sorry, I, I was trying to see it because I... I thought I had written down the Falcons rushing yards in this game. I don't think I did, but I remember looking at Bijan Robinson's numbers and they looked really like pedestrian and average, which his first couple weeks, like that dude's been a fucking stud. Like he's been really fun to watch. Hate saying that about a Falcons player, but it's true. But he was like, no, no, no. The Lions were able to limit him. The Lions were able to make him mortal. Desmond Ritter, and just from a pure numbers perspective, because I haven't really seen him play it doesn't seem like he's really impressive. Now, he's only a second-year QB. There is a lot of time for him to improve. There's a lot of time for him to get better. And it looks like there is a pretty fucking solid supporting cast on offense and defense to support him in his development. The Lions just didn't seem to care in this game, so they got the dub. They're 2-0. The next game was the Chargers and the Vikings, where the Chargers won 28-24. This is the first game I got wrong. It's another one where I kept going back and forth. I'm like, do I really think the Chargers are going to lose this game? No. But do I really think the Vikings are going to lose this game? I, I, I know. But Brandon Staley seems like he's getting really desperate. And like he's probably going to do something stupid. 
and he did. Because the Chargers were up. I think it was still the same score, 28-24. to 24. Vikings were trying to score a touchdown, like a game-leading touchdown. Could not get it in. Chargers take over, go three and out, and they go for it on fourth down, like within their own 20, within their own 25. I don't remember what it was. I think it was like a fourth and two, fourth and one, something like that. And it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, you really have two options. You can go for it, and if you go for it, you'll bleed the clock and win the game. It's like, I don't want to give them a chance. Let's get it done now. On the other hand, if you punt it, you make them drive the length of the field, like make them fucking earn it. That might be the better idea. Because if you fuck this up, they're setting up shop right there. And that's exactly what happened. The Vikings weren't able to punch it in. So ultimately, excuse me, Staley's gamble paid off. If they lost that game, and it's like, it, that's the decision everyone would have looked to. Like, nothing else would have mattered. It would have been, you went for it there. Classic Brandon Staley maneuver, and you fucked up. Ugh. Justin Jefferson went off. Kirk Cousins went off. Herbert, what were his numbers? He had like 400 yards. Like, I think two touchdowns. They finally turned the ball over for the first time in this game. I think he was like 40 for 47 and 400 yards, like something like that. Like his numbers were like fucking crazy. With uh, Kellen Moore calling the offensive plays, Justin Herbert is balling. But Brandon Staley is a defensive coach. And the reason that they're losing games is because of the defense. I guess ultimately, you know, the defense made the stop when needed. So, you know, give credit where credit is due, but also Cousins threw, like, again, like, almost 400 yards. Jefferson had, like, almost 160. It doesn't really look like the defense is that good in... I almost said San Diego. In Los Angeles here. I'm not... Advo I, I don't want to advocate for someone's job. They're like, oh, you gotta fire this dude, but... If they had lost this game, they really might have. If they lose... I don't remember. I don't know who they're playing next week yet. I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't really looked into the games next week. Probably tonight. I'm actually going to start like looking at them. And be like, all right, who do I think is going to win? Who do I think is going to win? The game I'm excited for though, because I know this one is the Broncos and the Bears. I wish that was a prime time game. <laughs> I'm, oh man, I wish that was a Thursday night game so bad. That game just on the marquee is like that is Thursday night football. In its purest form. Maybe even more than Broncos Colts last year. <laughs> God, what a terrible game that was. Anyways. Um, but the Chargers finally got a win. So they're treading water. They're alive. The Vikings are 0-3. Now in their division, they're, they're two games behind the Lions. Two games behind the Packers. Teams they play twice. So the Vikings still control their own destiny as far as the division is concerned. It's not like we are now completely fucked. But 0-3 is bad. 0-3 when your offense is playing as lights out as it is, but your defense is terrible, is concerning. I'm a Saints fan. I know how concerning that can be. There's a part of me that is like, okay... I want to see this play out. Vikings lose another game or two. And they're like, we're kind of fucked. Let's just like, this is Kirk. I believe this is the last year of his contract. It's like, let's go ahead and get what we can for him. And we've already got this many losses. Fuck it. Let's enter the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. We can throw a game or two against the Bears. Let them keep fields. We'll get Caleb Williams. So they trade Kirk Cousins to the Jets, who now need a QB because of the shit that happened with Aaron Rodgers. Kirk Cousins goes to the Jets and is doing what he's doing in Minnesota. He is balling out. So the Vikings get the number one overall pick. Or maybe there's another team that gets the number one overall pick that doesn't need a QB. 
uh, like, I don't know, like maybe the Texans finish where they're like, we're fucking happy with CJ Stroud. We'll, we'll get like Marvin Harrison Jr. We'll pick Travis Hunter or like we'll trade the pick, whatever. But the Vikings end up with Caleb Williams. The Bears now have Justin Fields. And with the way the season has gone thus far, they're probably going to move on from like, this is the one part where I'm like, I'm not looking forward to this necessarily. Because I, I don't want to see Justin Fields fail. But let's say the Bears are like, let's move on from Justin and see what we can get elsewhere. So back to the Jets, with Kirk Cousins under center, they did really well. Maybe they win the Super Bowl, I don't know. I'm not like actively hoping for the Jets to win the Super Bowl. But like, let's say they make the playoffs or like just barely miss it, or maybe they win a playoff game and lose to the Chiefs or some shit. But once they got Kirk, it was a really successful season. But now Aaron Rodgers is gonna come back. And like, that was their guy. That's the guy they went out and got. But he's coming off this Achilles injury. So they're like, I don't know if we should stick with him or if we should stick with Kirk. Kirk is now a free agent, but we can sign him and then maybe we can send Aaron elsewhere. So the Bears get Aaron Rodgers because they want a QB and they're like, we know better than anybody how good Aaron Rodgers is. So Aaron Rodgers is completing his Brett Favre arc. Play for the Packers for fucking ever. Have the Packers draft your replacement while you're still there. Although with Favre, it was like he was already his own. Well, no, I think... I don't think Favre was quite on his way out the door yet, but he was definitely getting there. Go to the Jets. Get injured at, for the Jets. So you're only there for one year. And then go to a division rival. And then... Uh, I don't know. Favre made it to the NFC Championship. Maybe... Rodgers takes the Bears to the NFC Championship. Maybe he wins them the fucking Super Bowl. Like, how nutty would that be? Aaron Rodgers wins two Super Bowls in his career. One in Green Bay and then one for the fucking Bears. Probably immediately becoming the best QB in Bears history. Like, there's... I'm like, could this happen? Like, how fucking insane would that be? Like, I... I want to somehow see Aaron Rodgers in a Bears uniform just because of how fucking weird it would be. But getting back to picks, Chargers, Vikings, or not picks, review. Yeah, uh, this was an offensive showcase. Ultimately, the Chargers defense was able to eke out the win. So I am 2-1-1, and, and now I'm 2-2 two two because the Saints blew a 17-0 lead in the fourth quarter to the Packers. Um... I didn't watch this game, but I followed this game. Saints were up 7-0 very early. I was like, what the fuck? We scored a touchdown in the first quarter. That doesn't happen. I kind of like that, though. This is nice. I appreciate this. Then next thing I know, it's 14-0, because Rashid Shahid popped a fucking, like, 76-yard punt return. I'm like, yes. We're up two scores. With the way our defense plays, that might just be the game right there. Holy shit. And then at the end of the half, we get a field goal. I'm like, all right, 17 to nothing at half. Works for me. Then Derek Carr gets hurt. And Jameis comes in. And it's just punt, 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 punt. Like, I don't even know if we had a first down. I think maybe we had one before the final drive, but it was just like, I would look and it's like, all right, well, there goes the ball. All right, well, there goes the ball. All right, well, there goes the fucking ball. The Packers, at the start of the fourth quarter, had a four, it was like a fourth and goal. It was either a fourth and goal or it was a fourth down at like the 13, something like that. They didn't convert. So I'm like, okay, 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 okay. We're still up 17 nothing at the start of the fourth quarter. It is not over yet. Let's try to kill some clock. I see if we can kick like a fucking field goal. It doesn't happen. So we're not able to move the ball. I don't know if afterwards it's just the defense got really tired because the offense wasn't doing shit. 
I don't know if the defense started playing soft zone. I don't. I, I know at least one of the Packers' possessions, there was like a big P.I. penalty, and I haven't seen it. So I don't know if it's a, like, I hate that it happened, but it's a good call, or if it's a, that's bullshit. But the Packers stormed back, scored 18 unanswered points, one point lead. Saints have the ball. All right, go, go win the game. They're able to move it down the field. They get to about the 30-yard line. Two-minute warning. Packers have three timeouts. So I'm thinking, okay. From here, it's about a 47-yard field goal. Which is not a gimme, but it's very makeable. Like, my expectation for an NFL kicker, anything under 40 yards is the equivalent to a quarterback throwing a check down to a wide-open target. You should make that in your sleep. Again, like, you know, and sometimes, like, there's shit that can happen. Like, if it gets blocked because your line didn't protect, that's not on you. If it's in a fucking monsoon, if it's super muddy, if there's snow coming down, if the fucking holder doesn't turn the laces out. Like, there's, there's things that can happen. And, of course, we are all human. Sometimes people make a mistake. But anything under 40 yards should be a gimme. I feel like anything between like 40 to 50, especially like 45 to 50, it's like, all right, that's, you should be making that regularly, but I get it. That's not super easy. And then to me, anything over 50 is like, that's, if you can do that, that's incredible. I'm not going to fault a kicker for missing a like 53 yard field goal. That's, that, at least that's how I see it. I'm like a 47 yarder, we should be able to make that. So here's what we need to do. Run it, run it again, and run it again. Because I believe our kicker can make it from here. The other team has three timeouts. I want them to burn all three of their timeouts. So the first play, it's a run. Cool. Got a couple yards. It's a tiny little bit closer. Packers aren't, Packers aren't calling timeout. Okay. Works for me. If they don't want to conserve the clock after our kicker nails this kick that's up to them i'm happy for it next play let's run it again we're not running it james is throwing it oh that was almost intercepted <sighs> why are you not why are you not running the ball again why are you not trying to kill the clock if you get a first down that's even better yeah but you could get on the ground maybe have fucking Taysom hill run it or some shit i don't know it's like, we are trying to kill clock. Why would you throw it and risk an incompletion? Why would you throw it in the traffic like that and like risk an interception? Oh, that's like the, oh, that's not the worst thing that could have happened, but why would you do that? Third down. Oh, fuck. We're throwing it again. At least it was complete. At least he's down in bounds. So we're able to kill more clock. But just why would you do that when you can... I mean, if it's if it's like a playoff game and the atmosphere is more intense than it is specifically win or go home, I could be more understanding of the aggressive nature, but probably still not agree with it. But here, I'm like, this is a regular season game. It's not a division game. We can still win this if we're conservative, if our defense is able to hold, which they haven't really done this quarter, un understandably, but this is still a fantastic defense. Run the ball, kill the clock. Doesn't do it. And then our kicker missed the kick anyways. Okay. Sure enough. I will give credit to the Packers though. Jordan Love. Like, I think I believe this was actually I think it's technically his second game starting in the Lambo. Maybe not necessarily the second, because I think his first was like last year or the year before when Mahomes and the Chiefs went into Lambeau and he was starting in Rodgers' place. But now that he is officially the Packers starting quarterback, this was his first time starting in Lambeau. He gave him a show at the end. He was able to weather the storm. He didn't play great in the first three quarters. And then when he was needed most, he delivered. He made the comeback. He was able to have like an Aaron Rodgers moment. He had an Aaron Rodgers moment week one when he fucking owned the Bears. And now he's able to have a big comeback at home. 
you know, the Packers are a team a lot of people overlooked early in the season. Not everybody, but a lot of people did. I will throw myself in there because I wasn't really sure how good this team was going to be. It's still early. It's only three weeks in. They're 2-1. and one. They could... It's really weird. So, like, they're 2-1. and one. I'm like, they could have easily been 3-0. and oh. They easily could have been 1-2. and two. But they are 2-1. and one. This feels like this is a good team. Now, will they make the playoffs? I don't know. Can they go on a deep run? Possibly. But I feel like this is a team where, like, I really can't overlook them. And with the Saints... This feels like last year part two. The offense is not that great. The offensive line has a lot of question marks. The defense is balling, but they are not infallible. And now our QB, and what do you know? A couple weeks into the season, our QB is injured. Like, this is, this is familiar, and I hate it. This familiarity is breeding contempt, but uh, so far in the, the week... I am 2-2. Two two. So let's see if we can get another win. And we do. Because, like I had said for my well, one of my big upset picks, the Texans beat the Jaguars 37-17. to And this is one of those games where I'm like, okay. At one point, Houston was up, like, I think it was 17 to, like, 17 nothing. I was like, oh, shit. They're blasting them. Like, I know I had, like, said, like, I'm, I've got that feeling I'm going to pick, you know, with the Texans in an upset. I'm kind of surprised it's happening though, but like, okay, okay. And then Jack, like Jacksonville scored a touchdown. I'm like, all right, 17 to seven. It's closer than I would like for my pick, but it is what it is. Okay, 17, 14. Looks like the Jags are getting their shit together. They're kind of catching fire again. It is what it is. And then the next time I checked, uh, I think Houston was up. Oh, I don't remember. But like they had, I think they had scored like another 10 points or so. So it was 20, like 27 to 14, something like that. And I was like, huh, they're up again. Like they're, they're doing really well. Like that's, they were just consistently pulling ahead and pulling away. And then ultimately they won by 20. CJ Stroud in three games has yet to throw an interception. That is a... That on its own is a fantastic thing to hear. And then when you look at the numbers, it's not just like, yeah, and a great, I haven't actually like seen a lot of the throws. Maybe it is a lot of check downs. Maybe it is like a lot of just yards after catch. I'm like, he's, at least according to the numbers, it looks like he's been slinging it everywhere. Dude is averaging like 300 plus like yards a game, I think. He's looking really good. I mean, like, if you watched the Ohio State-Georgia playoff game, it was like, he looks really good. I'm excited for him. Like, I'm, again, like, I'm not a Houston fan or anything. But, like, I feel almost a little excited for the Texans. Like, you guys, you guys might really be building something. And when it comes to the Jaguars, I'm like, okay. Are you guys a fool's goal team again? Cause like I said, I remember with that year, they were what the no, they weren't the two seed that year. Were they? I think they were the three or the four seed. But the year they went to the AFC Championship game and damn near almost won the thing. I was like, this was a really good team. They had an elite fucking defense, an offense that was you know, kind of spotty, but could have these big breakout games. Just missed going to the Super Bowl, but now they're back. They're going to avenge their demons and their shit again. Is that what's going on? Because they're one and two, which it's still way too early to, uh, with some exceptions. I feel like to really say how good or bad certain teams are. And it's like, okay, I mean, they lost a division game. That happens. And they lost to the Chiefs. Understandable. But the Jaguars do, and again, it was a different coach, different quarterback, all that kind of shit. Like, it's two very different teams. But it's a pretty Jaguars thing to do, to have a really good season, have very high expectations, and then to shit the bed the next year. I'm not completely ready to give up on them. It's like, they looked really strong in the second half last, like, the second half of last season. But like I keep saying, I'm like, it also took... 
a massive Titans collapse for the Jags to even have a chance. And the Titans were super injured during that span. And the Jags still barely won that de facto playoff game to get into the playoffs. So, how much do I believe in them? I don't think at this time I really do. But again, it's too early to be like, oh no, I think they're bad. But like, I don't know if I'm like really on board the Jags bandwagon right now. But um, that, that's how that is. I am now three and two, so I'm still above 500 in my picks. And uh, oh God, the next one is Denver and Miami. <laughs> um, you, you probably know what happened. If you don't, the Denver Broncos scored 20 points, which is not, like, terrible. I feel like that's a... In today's NFL, that's probably not really going to win you some games, although it can. But it, it's, a, it's a decently respectable offensive output. I think when you look at just, like, the yards and completions, Russell Wilson and Tua's numbers are pretty similar. I think Tua only threw one touchdown. Maybe he threw two. But, like, for the most part, like, his numbers are not, like, insane. Now, maybe he still had, like, 400 yards. I'm not sure. But I think at least, like, the attempts and completions and shit are, like, really similar between the two of them. I don't think Russ threw an interception. I know there were a couple fumbles. I think that was Cortland Sutton. But, again, I was, like, not maybe not the best offensive outing. They scored a pretty respectable 20 points. And they have an elite defense that last week helped along with the offense to squander an 18-point lead and gave up 35 points to a team that this week only scored three. They gave up 35 points at halftime to the Dolphins. So, knowing that the Broncos only scored 20, by halftime, the game was essentially over. And I was texting a buddy of mine who's also, who's in the fantasy league, and this is the guy that has Justin Jefferson, Tyreek, and Devontae. And I was like, dude, the Dolphins are on pace to put up 70. Like, holy shit, like, they are having such a great offensive day. I said that. I wanted to see it, but I didn't think I actually would. They fucking scored 70 points. If Mike McDaniel wanted to, he could have kicked a field goal at the end and like tied the record at 73. The Broncos, with their elite defense, lost a game by 50 points. Seeing a team score 50 is rare. There's a reason we get excited as football fans to see a 50-burger. I had only seen 60 points once. And that was, I think, 2011 with the Saints and the Colts on, uh, like, Sunday night, which that was also, like, Peyton wasn't playing. Which, it's not like Peyton Manning plays defense, but, again, the Saints offense could just do whatever the fuck they wanted. Um, and they had more possessions because the... Colts offense wasn't doing shit but the Saints scored fucking 60 points I, I don't know if it was 60 even or if it was like 61 62 but I was like holy shit that was wonderful that was amazing that's the most I've ever seen the Dolphins scored 70 again like 50 is rare and that was the margin of victory how the Dolphins had two players, not one, not three, but two separate dudes, each score four touchdowns. We had a sighting of Mike effing White, who threw two passes, and one of them was a touchdown. <laughs> Even Mike White got in on it. Holy crap. I know I had said that is like, I'm picking Miami to win. I think they look really good. I think, 
I think I had even, I think one of the things I'd said, I was like, yeah, like Patrick Sertan's a fantastic corner, but he can't cover both Hill and Waddle. Jalen Waddle didn't even fucking play in this game and they scored 70. Um, I'm still in awe. <laughs> I'm still kind of in shock that that happened, that that was even a possibility. I was saying earlier that I was like, right now, like, I guess the overreaction, it doesn't even feel like an overreaction, to be honest, is that it looks like San Francisco is kind of on cruise control to the NFC Championship, where I imagine they'll probably play Philly, maybe Dallas. I would hope it's the Saints. I would hope we win the Super Bowl this year, but I wouldn't count on it with the way the offense has looked the past three weeks, even with Derek Carr healthy. I mean, what's... We haven't scored more than 20 points in three games. That's not impressive. The Dolphins just look like they're on cruise control. It's not even like, yeah, like, well, we're on kind of cruise control through the regular season. Like, they might just win the whole thing. I'm not necessarily saying that right now they're my Super Bowl pick. I guess I don't really have one at the moment. Like, to me, like, I don't really want to get... I mean, like, it, while it is fun to, like, predict... And that's what I'm going to do tomorrow and shit. It's like... I don't really want to be like, this is my Super Bowl pick. Until, like, maybe week 10, week 11. And that's where at least I would feel confident making one. And not just like, yeah, this is my pick for now. It's like, this is what I think is actually going to happen. Barring any, like, injury or anything. But boy, the Dolphins look good. They're one of the three undefeated teams. They are the only unbeaten team in the AFC. Week one was close. Week two was close. Week three, they made the Broncos look like a fucking joke. This Denver team looks broken. It feels like they are cursed and it doesn't fucking matter what they do. Week one, they gave up only 17 points. Didn't matter. They only scored 16. Week two... They scored 35 points, excuse me, they scored 33 points at an actually good offensive day. Didn't matter because you gave up 35. And then here, you only scored 20, which would have given you a win week one, but you gave up 70. And it's not even like it was, okay, they, they scored on like a punt return. They scored on a kick return. There was a pick six. There was a fumble recovery for a touchdown. They blocked a field goal return. It was all on offense, which means that is all on Denver's defense. Elite my ass. God, that team looks bad. They should beat the Bears next week, but I feel no confidence that this Denver team can. They should. I, mmm. Oh, they look bad. Um... Right now I'm four and two. Let's go to the next game. Uh, I'm now five and, or excuse me, I'm now four and three. Cleveland beat Tennessee 27 to three, which was almost the magic number. It was one, they were one point shy of my favorite, my favorite NFL score. <laughs> but um, Tennessee's run defense is really fucking good. But Watson looked really good. Again, just like looking at the numbers, it was like they shut down the running game, which of course there's no Nick Chubb. Like I would expect that. But Watson looked good, which he really hasn't the first two weeks. Uh, oh, I was trying to read my note real quick because I, I know I'd actually written something down for this game. I don't remember the exact number of total offense the Titans had. It was barely over 100 yards. It was like 107, 109, something like that. And I look at that and I go, is that because of Cleveland's defense or is that because of Tennessee's offense? And I don't think those are mutually exclusive. Tennessee made the Bengals look terrible. Or excuse me, uh, Cleveland made the Bengals look terrible. Which granted... The conditions were really bad. Burrow was still injured. It's like, that's understandable. But there's still, you got to give credit to Cleveland. They made Pittsburgh's offense look terrible. Which, granted, Pittsburgh's offense is terrible. <laughs> but give credit to Cleveland. Tennessee's offense is also pretty bad. 
The Chargers defense made them look okay, but the Chargers defense is also fucking ass. But Cleveland shut them down. So it is me going like, is Cleveland's defense that good? Or have there just been like, they played two bad offenses and the Bengals in the rain? And with an injured QB, so maybe their defensive like aptitude is also kind of fool's gold. Miles Garrett certainly is like I don't know if you've seen that play of like two tight ends, but or like Miles Garrett moves across the formation, so the band, the Titans pull two tight ends to go over there. So Garrett goes the other way, and then the tight ends keep going around. <laughs> like it's really funny, but um. I feel like I'm excited to see Cleveland play a team with a good offense. I don't know if they play Miami this year, but if they play like Miami, Buffalo, uh, actually I think they play Baltimore next week, who's, eh, they've had some games where the offense looks okay, they have some games where the offense doesn't, so I, I wouldn't even know what to make of that one as much. I want to see them get really tested so I know if this defense is legit or not. But the early prognosis is this defense is fucking good. On to Tennessee, the early prognosis is their, def or their defense is good, but their offense is bad. I don't know when their bye week is, but I would bet money that Tannehill is getting benched in the bye week. If not before that. Do I think Vrabel is on the hot seat? I don't think so. At least not yet. Like I don't I don't feel that. Tannehill is. I think um, if they have another really bad performance or two in a row, they will bench him. When the bye week happens, unless they've caught fire, it's we're throwing in Levis or we're throwing in Willis. We can't do this anymore. God, really nothing else to say. Just uh that's it. And what am I now? I think I said I'm four and three. I'm four and three. Now I'm five and three because the Bills stomped the commies 37 to 3. Holy shit. Holy shit. Like they won by 34 points. And after what Miami did, that's like not even impressive anymore. What is impressive to me, because I had said, I was like, I think Buffalo is going to win. I think they're still going to win pretty big. But I do expect the, oh, I was just checking my cat. I am expecting the Washington defense to still show up. I'm expecting a lot of sacks on Josh Allen. I'm expecting like a, a forced fumble, maybe a couple interceptions. Like Allen is still going to have a very good numbery game, like a lot of yards, like a couple touchdowns. But he'll still have the turnovers in this one, too. He didn't. I think he still threw an interception. But there was, like, no fumbles. No sacks. That Washington D-line with um, Young, Sweat, Payne, no sacks on Josh Allen. I know he's a mobile, like, scampery son of a bitch. But none? Damn! How'd Sam Howell do? He threw four picks. Damn! I think I think I wrote down how many times he was sacked. I think it was like nine or some stupid shit, which sounds nuts, but let's see. Yeah, it was! He was sacked nine times! Like, holy crap! What the fuck, dude? Um, And like, uh, James Cook, I think it was like 98 yards. He was just shy of 100. He's starting to come into his own. The Bills are starting to have that running game, that running threat to complement Josh Allen so he doesn't really need to do everything himself. That kind of shit makes Buffalo scary. Oh, man. Like I was saying, I was like, Miami is like, I don't know if I want to pick them to win the Super Bowl at this time. I my preseason AFC pick again, like last year. I don't know if I ever made this publicly last year, but I thought it would be Buffalo. Like, it's been Buffalo. I'm like, I still have faith in this team. I still really do. And I, I want to see it. I've been showing it the last couple of weeks. And now it's like Buffalo and Miami. That's a good game. That sounds like a really good game on paper. Oh, man. I, 
I don't know who I'm going to pick to win that one. I really don't because part of me is like, dude, it's in Buffalo. Buffalo has been cooking these last few weeks. They've kind of gotten their shit together. They know how much of a threat Miami is. Those boys are going to be ready to play. And I'm also like, Buffalo's been on a roll. They didn't score 70. <laughs> it's like, but they mean the team that lost to the Jets is on a roll? Come on, man. Like, oh, I'm... I am excited to, like, know what happens in that game and to be able to make a pick on that game tomorrow. Like, I don't know. It's like the exact... It's the same feeling as the Broncos and the Bears game, but the opposite reason for it. It's like, I'm excited for this because it's going to be terrible. I'm excited for this because it should be actually genuinely amazing. It's like, I this, this kind of shit is why I love football, man. But uh, five and three right now. Now we go to five and four. Colts beat the Ravens 22 to 19 in overtime. This was a game that was very back and forth while watching it. Ravens had an early lead. Then Colts took the lead. I was like, oh, now the Ravens are up. Now the Colts are up again. Now the Ravens are up again. But, oh, the Colts have the ball. There's enough time. They might tie it. Holy shit, they did. I actually did get to watch a little bit of overtime when I was on my lunch break, which is also when I was watching the last drive of the Saints and the Packers. I did see the last couple drives. So the Colts went for it on fourth down at about midfield or like ish. I don't remember if they were on like their 40 or the Ravens 40 or maybe it was just at the 50. They didn't get it. And I'm like, okay, Ravens got this now. You need, I don't know, 20 yards to get in Justin Tucker's field goal range. And even then you probably only really need about like 10, 15 for him to have a chance at making it, but like 20, 25 yards, like that, that's a fucking gimme it should be for Justin Tucker. Oh, it's third down already. Oh, it's fourth down already. Oh shit, the Ravens just went four and out. Which I remember watching that last play live, and I was like, ah, was he there early, the defender? I'm not sure. I could see that being called. I could see that not being called. It's a little tight. Ah, 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 but okay, but. The Ravens went 4-0, and out, and then the Colts got it back, did just enough. I had said earlier in the week, like, I had I had a good feeling about the Colts, but I'm like, I don't think, it's like, here's the thing, if Anthony Richardson is playing, I don't trust him to finish the game, unfortunately, so I don't feel like I can pick them. If he's not playing... Do I really trust Gardner Minshew to go out and win? Like, he's not, like, a completely ass or anything, but, like, he is a backup for a reason. Do I really think that he's going to beat the Ravens? I could see it, but I'm going to say no, and I should have picked I should have picked Uncle Rico. He got it done, but um, the Ravens are no longer undefeated. So there, uh, that, that's that. There's not really much else to say. Five and four. Next one. Patriots, Jets, Pats won 15 to 10. I picked them to win. I'm 6 5. This is a game where I think there were no turnovers, but there was also just no offense either. Uh, it's two good defenses. It's Bill Belichick just knows how to beat the Jets. This is what, 15 wins in a row? That is absurd. That is fucking insane. I don't think I've seen a single snap from this game. So I couldn't tell you if Zach Wilson is actively fucking awful or if it is like no he's actually playing not terrible for what he's being given or like he's actively improving i don't know i know the narrative around old zach is not good so like i was saying if you feel like you're a qb away and the vikings aren't doing so hot can you get kirk cousins maybe you can and if you do, and you go on a run, maybe you keep Kirk, maybe Aaron goes somewhere else, because I feel like Aaron Rodgers will want to play at least one more year. Okay, the, uh, on the one hand, though, I'm like, do I really think he would go to the Bears? It's like, I feel like he went to the Jets because this is a good team. There's a lot of good players on offense, a lot of good players on defense. They need a good QB. They need a field general to lead them. And then, you know, after a couple seasons, I can pass the torch. Do I really think he would go to Chicago? That 
doesn't look very good on like either side of the ball. No, but this is my fantasy world where Aaron Rodgers hilariously goes to the Bears and wins them a Super Bowl. Let me have this. Uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say at the game. Or to, to say about that one. Uh, next one, Carolina at Seattle. Seattle won 37-27. to We had a red rifle sighting because Bryce Young was injured. And I, I don't want to sound excited for this. Like, I'm not excited that Bryce Young was injured, but... Just seeing Andy Dalton, like, it's weirdly kind of hype. Like, dude, he, he's playing, the backup's playing. And he threw, like, 357 yards or some shit. Like, he was carving up Seattle's defense. It's so weird to think that the Seahawks in Seattle are giving up so many passing yards and are, like, getting cut. Like, I know the Legion of Boom was, like, a decade ago. Oh god, I feel old. But it's like it's ugh. it's so weird to think about, but it's like, man, this really is a new era in Seattle. But on the other hand, it's like, yeah, the defense got carved up. Gino still had a decent game. He had like 250, two TDs, a pick, or it was one TD and two picks. I think it was two TDs and one pick. So it's like it's a respectable game. Kenneth Walker the third. Uh, I think he had like 97 on the ground. So like very close to 100 yard game. Had a touchdown. It's still the Seahawks in Seattle. They can still win there even if there's like a shootout. It's just, it feels weird seeing Seattle give up so many points. And I mean, and it's not the only season it happened. There was that weird shootout they had with the Saints last year. The both games against Detroit like this year and last year. But they got it done. I picked them to win 7-5. I'm about to go eight and five because next is the Bears and the Chiefs, where the um, the Chiefs at one point were up forty-one to nothing. I can only presume they saw what the Dolphins did and said we take that as a challenge. But unlike the Dolphins, they stopped they stopped scoring after the third quarter. The Bears scored ten, so they only lost by thirty-one, not forty-one. It was not as devastating, but it basically was. Um, Taylor Swift was there. That's cool. She was really excited for Travis Kelsey, and Kelsey, <laughs> he did his best Gronk impression by get it, having 69 yards and a touchdown. I'm like, I respect to that. I gotta shout that out. But, um, the Chiefs look like they're the Chiefs. Like, they're a really good team. It's like, this is what a good team is supposed to do. You are supposed to beat other teams that we think are good, like when they beat Jacksonville, and when you play a team that people think is dog shit, you have to destroy them and prove that you are the dominant species, which they fucking did here. You could say the same thing about the Dolphins. Chargers, we think Dolphins are Chargers. They're both supposed to be good teams. What did the Dolphins do? They won. It was close, but they won. The Patriots, a division rival, like an old foe, Closer than maybe we thought, but they got it done. Broncos, we think they're dog shit. They were buried alive. And then they kept getting deeper. But, um, Chiefs did what they had to. I'm now 8-5. and five. Now I'm 8-6. and six. Dallas and Arizona. Arizona won 28-16. Dallas lost Trayvon Diggs for the year. And that's a really fucking shitty thing to happen. And I remember kind of thinking about that. And I was like, okay, the Cardinals won. The Cardinals never trailed. Were they picking them apart through the air? Is that why it's like, like without digs there, like it was just, there was no passing defense. The Cardinals had like 200 yards on the ground. Where was the Dallas run defense? Holy shit. Pew, 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 pew. That's what the Cardinals fucking did. They just massacred him. I mean, he didn't even say it's a massacre. It was like 28 to 14 or 28 to 13. Like it's, what was the number? It was 16, excuse me. It's like, it's a 12 point game. It's not like a super beat down. Like Dallas was always in it. But Arizona had 200 yards on the ground against this vaunted Dallas defense. And this is, I remember saying this last week. I was like, yeah, I'm picking Dallas to win. But to me, this is 
there's no good outcome for Dallas. And obviously, if they win, that's a good outcome. I mean, like, for my perception of the team, if you beat the Cardinals in a close game, you're proving to me that this team we all think is terrible, which apparently they're not. Like, that's three close games in a row and one win over a supposed Super Bowl contender. Hold on a second. Arizona might actually be good? We'll see. Like, you, uh... If you beat them and it's close, then I think maybe Dallas isn't as good as I think they are because they should be destroying teams like that. Look at the Chiefs. and The Chiefs, the Bills, the Dolphins this week. Are, are you also the 49ers? Um, if you lose to them... Which, granted, just because a team loses a game does not mean they suck. It does not mean they are not Super Bowl contenders. Only one team has ever gone undefeated. And sometimes you lose to bottom feeders. Again, I will never get over the fact that how the fuck did last year's Colts beat the eventual champion Chiefs? How did the Texans take the Chiefs to overtime? It's any given Sunday. I get it. But in this early part of the season where we don't really know how good everybody is or how bad people are, again, with like the exception of the Bears. These kinds of losses do make you go, how good is Dallas really? At the moment, I'm not sure who they're playing next week. So I don't know if it's kind of one of those like, okay, like they thought they had an easy win. Maybe they were a little more focused thinking about next week. You know, they did just lose Trayvon Diggs. That doesn't help. I imagine morale maybe wasn't the best around the locker room that week. You can kind of understand it maybe. But you're still supposed to win that game. You're supposed to win that kind of game big. To really show that we are one of the better teams. We are here to contend. We're not playing for the division. We're not even playing for the NFC. We're playing for keeps. We want it all. I didn't actually get to see the game, but from following it as it was happening, that's not the vibe I was getting from Dallas. And even last week against the Jets, the Jets, at least from like the perspective of the score, were in it a lot longer than I thought they would be. I know I was saying, it's like, I don't know if the Jags are just a barrage, if they're just fool's gold. Dallas has gotten people before. I don't know if this is another season like that. It's like, do I think this team's going to miss the playoffs? No. Barring, you know, anything like anything further that's like nuts. No, I don't think so. But do I think they're going to the Super Bowl? At the moment, no. Like I said, I think the NFC is either San Francisco. It's San Francisco or Phillies to lose. Hopefully the Saints can win it. But I think it's between those two. I think Dallas can make the playoffs. I think they can win a game. Maybe they could upset one of those two. Like, they know Philly well. Like, if I can see a divisional upset. That kind of shit happens. But I'm not, like, really ready to crown them yet. But, um, 8-6. and six, Pittsburgh and Vegas. Uh, Pittsburgh won 23-18. I did pick this game correctly, so I am 9-6. and six. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to make sure I had, like, my numbers right. I think those numbers are correct. 9-6. and six. All right. 8-6, and six, but I got that wrong. But then this would put me at 9-6. and six. But I got that right, which would be 10-6. and six. And then, wait. The fuck? I don't know, maybe my numbers are right. I feel like my numbers are off. But anyways, I got the prediction of Pittsburgh and Vegas right. Pittsburgh won the game. I picked them because I don't trust Josh McDaniels because of all the shit that happened last year. And I don't trust Jimmy Garoppolo because I don't think he's that good. Now, I'm not saying I trust Kenny Pickett. He threw a ball straight to Marcus Peters 
who dropped it, and if he didn't, he would have had a walk-in fucking touchdown. But overall, I'm like, I distrust the Raiders way, way more than I distrust the Steelers. And what do you know? At the end of the game, Josh McDaniels has a choice. There's, what, two minutes left? Maybe three? You're down eight points. You're, like, fourth and goal, or it's, like, fourth and two at, like, the... 11 like so is some shit like that and instead of playing for the touchdown and the conversion he kicks a field goal i believe they did get the ball back but they did not get it with enough time to like actually do anything down five points so they lost why the fuck would you make that call but i uh, you know like i trusted our defense to get us the ball back Okay. You didn't trust your offense, though, to go ahead and tie the game? Because th think about it. Think about it. Like, if you trust your defense enough to get you the ball back, then theoretically, your offense can score, tie the game, your defense gets you a stop, gets you the ball back, and then you can go and win it. You didn't trust your offense to pull it off, though? You uh, you do realize that if you kick the field goal here, like you have to, you still have to score the touchdown, because with the field goal now you're up five, or excuse me, now you're down five. Field goal will not give you that. If you fail the conversion, Pittsburgh is backed up, and like th there were a few like big chunk plays from them. It's like, are you, are you really trusting Pittsburgh? To get out of that situation? Kenny Pickett might give you a gift. It's Kenny Pickett. You might set up shop with great field position after a defensive stop. You might even get a fucking safety, which would get you the ball back and two points. So now you don't need the two-point conversion. There's like no world where what you did with the amount of time left in the game was the right decision. So why did you do it? This is why I don't trust him as a head coach. That's why I don't think the Raiders are going to be good. Now they might win a few more games. They have the Broncos coming up again. But I don't, I don't trust them for shit, dude. So, uh, there's that. Then the next game is uh, Philly and Tampa, which is a scoregami game. Just like uh, just like the Dolphins game, because of course a team that scores 70 is going to get a score of But Philly won 25-11 to over Tampa Bay. And DeAndre Swift had like 130 yards on the ground. He's a fucking boss. He's just killing him. There were times where Hurts looked kind of shaky with some of his throws, but... There are a lot of other times where he looked perfectly fine. It seemed like they were getting to a rhythm. He and A.J. Brown certainly had a rhythm throughout the game. The defense was able to get the Bucks to commit a few turnovers, which they hadn't done all year. Baker threw a pick. Uh, there was a fumble, I think, from, uh, from Rashad White. There might have been a third turnover. That sounds right, but I don't 100% remember it. But I think there was. It's like the Philly defense... Balled out. They only gave up three points through three quarters. There was a safety scored. I always get hyped whenever I see a safety because of how rare it is. Like at one point, Philly was leading 25 to three. They gave up a late touchdown, but they didn't let the Bucs do anything the rest of the game offensively. I think maybe the Bucs had one more possession. They couldn't do shit. I kept saying these past two weeks... What I need to see from the Eagles is like what I've been saying, like the Chiefs beating the Bears by 31 points, the Dolphins winning by 50, the fucking Bills winning by 34. If you are one of these upper echelon teams and you're playing a team that you feel like we are much better than them, show it. Destroy them. And granted, the final score is not a complete destruction. That's a two-score game. That's only two touchdowns. 14 points to me is certainly not a blowout. But when, if you watched the game, they were leading almost the entire way. The defense was smothering. 
The offense was just killing clock, controlling the ball, rarely making mistakes. This, to me, felt like this is the Philly game I've been waiting for. This was the domination. They were leading by 22 points. They gave up eight in the fourth quarter. They didn't give up the other 14. They did everything they needed to. Good fucking job. And the last game, which I did get wrong, was the Bengals winning 19-16 to over the Rams. I don't really know anything from this game. I did not get to see this game. I don't really like these Monday night doubleheaders. I will say this, though. The second I saw that the Bengals were wearing the white uniforms, I was like, I think it's too late for me to change my pick. But if I had known they were wearing these uniforms, I 100% would have picked them to win. <laughs> and what do you know they did? Uh, they finally got themselves on the board. It looks like Joe Burrow finally had himself a good game numbers-wise. Still didn't throw a touchdown. He still threw a pick. But he had like 250 yards. That's good. I think... The Rams had like 71 yards rushing. The Bengals had like 67. So the two teams combined had about as many rushing yards as DeAndre Swift did in the previous game. Um, Looks like both D-lines were doing well from what I understand. But it wasn't the most like... Uh, it definitely wasn't a thorough domination by other te by either team. I don't really have much to say, but the Bengals won. They finally kind of got, they got themselves a win on the board. Those uniforms are magic. So let's see, how many did I actually get right? One, two, like I said, I, I think I lost count. This doesn't seem right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, no, so that is right. So I did go, so that should be ten and six, but for some reason, I, essentially my, my confusion is I wrote that I had six losses before the Rams game, and if there's only 16 games, I guess I may have, I may have counted a loss twice, I'm not sure, but I went ten and six, so that's worse than I did week two, but it's better, it's worse than I did in week two, but it's the same amount that I did in week one. It's still probably a playoff record. I'm doing well so far. Let's see what happens in week four. I will probably work on that tonight and will hopefully record my picks tomorrow. So um, that's it. Hope you have a good day.